whatever. Well, they have this match, and I thought that the performance of Kevin Owens, I mean, Kevin Owens was great, Roman Reigns was great, Jey Uso was great. Like, their performance was great, but the match, it's two-on-one for 20 minutes. I know. At the very least, Daniel Bryan should have run down, and they could have double-teamed and killed him and had him stretchered out or something like that, so he can go somewhere with Daniel Bryan. At least, like, somebody came to help the guy, but he's just getting his ass kicked for 20 minutes, and... I mean, like I said, the performance of they, all the they, guys they, was they good. Don't even, they don't even like. Do you know the thing that's so bad about it is they don't even make up storylines on why guys are not helping. They he just, just has no they, friends. They just never. Nobody ever helps anyone on the on the babyface side. It's like you know you could you could always do stuff like you know barricading the locker room or or guys get kicked out of the build like daniel bryan gets kicked out of the building for some god unknown reason so you don't have to be asking these questions but they they don't this is not a detailed ori- oriented company they just do what they want to do and you know you just go with those questions that like nobody why is why is why are four guys beating up on drew mcintyre and he's got to fend off all four and why is kevin owens for 20 straight minutes, 25 straight minutes, whatever whatever it is, just well, 24, you know, just basically, you know, in a handicap match and nobody evens the odds. No, no Adam Pierce comes out to kick the guy out. The guy come, you know, comes back constantly. Um, I mean, look, if this was a logical promotion, you could come back with, and I mean, with, with, you know, it was funny because when it's over, it's like, what do you do next? And my thought is, is, you know, thinking my own 40 years behind the times logical booking would be, you know what? They should come back in a freaking cage match with Kevin Owens and Roman Reigns with no interference, except you can't because every cage match has interference anyway. So what does it matter? Um, you know, or you could bar Jey Uso from ringside, but he's going to come out anyway, and it, and, and it's not going to matter. So it's like whatever. It's like it's like again, how much how much can you care when you know you you don't get that fulfillment and that um, you know you don't get the logical next step uh, because there is no logical next step because you know there's you know I mean. The logical next step, obviously, is is a match where Jey Uso can't interfere. You maybe hang Jey Uso from the roof of the building, although I wouldn't God. suggest that one either. So they get started, and this is the best part. Jey Uso comes out, and he's double-teaming Kevin Owens. Kevin Owens beats his ass. He injures his leg, and then guys come out from backstage to help Jey Uso to the back. Where were you people backstage when the guy was out there in the first place? Nobody seemed to care about two-on-one, but they sure cared when he hurt his ankle. So they cart him to the back, and There's then... No, okay, here's the thing. There's no logic in WWE whatsoever. There's no logic. We have to accept that. I'm not saying that that's good. I'm not defending it. It sucks. I don't okay? have to but, accept it. But but I'm just saying, there is no logic in WWE. They do not think these things out. They're coming up with stuff at the last minute, and it's just based... Now, now this match here... I mean, I'm going to guess because, again, when, when you have 46 table breaks and, and a re- over-reliance on, you know, big move, big move and spear and all that, that's usually a Paul Heyman match. And, and this one worked. I mean, I'm not even, no- I'm not knocking it in this case. And usually I'm, usually in, in fact, when, when it comes to the Paul Heyman matches, I don't knock it. It's just what it is. You know, it's like, you know, it violates the rules that you only hit the finisher once and this and that. But, that's that's what all the Lesnar matches and the Goldberg matches and everything are, you know, um, and it's fine. I, I mean, here it's like they were telling a story. It, it There were all kinds of logic holes in the sense of, you know, why did they not come out and just get rid of, you know, Jey Uso and, 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 and when, it's, when it's going on for so long and, you know, why is nobody helping them and blah, blah, blah. You know, it's just... Apparently, Kevin Owens did an interview on Talking Smack and the explanation that he gave was, I've turned on so many partners that nobody helps me. Which, okay, fine, but Daniel Bryan did help him just a couple of weeks ago. Well, and Daniel didn't. Bryan was on the show. So we know if we watch the show, which we do with our own two eyes, that there is a guy who has teamed with him and he has helped him in spite of all of that. And nobody, not a sight of Daniel Bryan. So they do the match. He's double teamed the entire time. And finally he goes to climb. Roman punches him in the balls, puts him in the guillotine on the ladder. Kevin falls off. Roman goes up and gets the belt. Roman's performance, great. Kevin's performance, great. Jay was great. Booking, 
WWE match. I, I either I accept it or you don't. Okay, I will say this though. I was very into the drama. And I'm very and that rare, very rarely happens in WWE match where I, I was really getting into the drama. Now, I I mean it was bullshit. I mean with all the interference, absolutely. And it was, it's like and like I said, it's like it was weird when it was over because like I was really into the drama of this match and the idea of Kevin Owens continually fighting back. It was getting Kevin Owens over. He's he, he keeps getting destroyed. He keeps fighting back. And I know at the end he's going to lose, so they better like do something really good to make him lose. And then at the end, you know, it is the low blow, and the you know, you know, and everything that's really the key to the, everything. After he survives all that double teaming, so but yeah, I mean, it's like I watched this stuff from New Japan all year, and and freaking hated it. So it's just a different standard. I mean, if I if if I had the same standard for for these guys as I have for New Japan, I I would have just gone. This is such bullshit. But I don't, and and the people, the fans don't either. So it were. I thought it worked. Um, you know, you can't tell. I mean, the you know the the fake crowd's going crazy. Um, the fake crowd, pop, you know, whatever. I did think that the, the that the crowd noise fit the match. Um, so I mean, in in that regard, you know, so many times I'm watching WWE, and I just go like, this crowd noise is so fake. It's not. It's like not helping the match. I cannot say that for anything tonight. I thought that the production, the production of the crowd noise was great. They had it loud and it related to the match. And, um, you know, um, none of, you know, it's, it, it's, it's great now. You know, none of the baby faces get booed. None of the heels get cheered. None. It's awesome. You know, for, for their standards, they're going to really hate it. Like, uh, after the first honeymoon period, because obviously at first when the crowds come back, there will be a honeymoon period. But once that honeymoon period's over and it's back to normal, um, you know they're gonna they're gonna be going crazy because they 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 got the crowd completely under control now. You know, one of the things that I want to mention here is, and this actually does play into what we're saying right here, but. So a lot of people are, are oh, I don't why are you guys more hard on the AW women's division, et cetera, et cetera. Aren't we? Well, I think the thing is... Aren't we? Well, hold on. Hold on. Let me get to my point. <laughs> Jesus Let me Christ. get to my point. Every time I hear the I know AEW we, stuff... we do talk about the bad matches, but here's the thing. There are a lot of green women in AEW, and when you have a lot of green women, you're not going to have great... Like, what can they do about it? You know what I'm saying? Put them on dark. They, that's what they do! But yeah. it's not like you can snap your fingers and go, oh, okay, like, you guys are green, I'm sick of it, like, be better! You just can't do that. It takes time. It's gonna. That's gonna. Okay, that's gonna take time. Okay, because you know. But hold on. Let me get to my point. Okay. Okay. So when I watch a show like this, it's not like you couldn't make this better with a few little things. I'm not asking for them to move heaven and earth. There are simple, logical things that you could do that could make the booking of these matches so much better they're not and they do, don't they're, even bother that's do why it. i get so irritated it's not like i'm asking him to move heaven and earth and have somebody run out to help kevin owens and get beat up i'm not asking for whatever i'm it's it, this would be simple but they don't do it that's why it's so irritating well you know they didn't do it in two matches like if it was only in one it would probably be less annoying like if they did one like if they did a whole card and uh, like you had like you know the put it this way if they didn't do the Drew McIntyre match where they did the exact same story okay and then you just had you know the Carmella match which was a nice wrestling match and you had the the New Day match which was a nice match the Charlotte Flair match which was fine you know you know and and the Drew McIntyre match and then you had the one match with all the all, all that stuff I mean it wouldn't it wouldn't feel feel duplicated I mean I, look I really liked the show anyway but I did too but I but, still but, got irritated but I I, I would say. Yes, you could probably have done it in one of the matches and not two, and it would have been better, and it wouldn't have felt like those two ladder matches were exactly they weren't exactly the same, but but they were they were way too similar. And then at the end, you have those same questions. It's like, okay, you know, why does Drew have no friends? Why does Owens have no friends? Why, you know, I mean, with Miz and with with the, with the Drew match, at least like the you know, I mean, I guess you could say that the Miz and Morrison stuff made sense. Only because Miz did have the briefcase. So you can kind of say, well, he does have the right to come in, and Morrison's always with him. You know, when you get Miz, you get Morrison. Um, so in a sense, it's a three way that becomes a four way, and then you got the, the big guy there. But the big guy there really wasn't, he never attacked Drew. Um, he actually, you know, if anything, he was the one who, uh, 
protected the belt because um he kept Miz from winning that one time. So um you know, but but yeah, there's that there's that thing. But you know, the whole build up with Reigns and, and Uso is that Uso's always interfering for him. So it just continues the storyline. You know. Um but I mean yeah, you can look if you had a real detailed oriented company and you know you you know look I probably could sit without any doubt. I could sit there and come up with ways to explain why Daniel Bryan's not there, you know, and it'd take you 15 seconds of TV time and you wouldn't have to ask me these questions at the end and they don't bother to do it. And you could do it. Um, they just don't bother. I, I mean, you're not going to get like, you know, you don't have bookers out there or creative or Vince or whatever who are sitting there going like, okay, why isn't, why is nobody helping Kevin Owens? He's just like, ah, you know, whatever, you, you know, what do you want to do? You know, it's like we're going to get we want Roman Reigns to get over and we got to figure out a way to beat Kevin Owens while protecting him. And if somebody came out and helped him, it wouldn't protect him as much as him, you know, coming back over and over and over again from the dead and almost winning and then still losing. Hey, if you're a big fan of Wrestling Observer Radio, we got 12,000 episodes of all of our podcasts up at our website, WrestlingObserver.com. If you sign up today, you get access to every single one of them. The 12 to 18 new shows that we do every single week. You can podcast them, listen to them on the road, at work, working out, in the shower, wherever you listen to your podcasts. And also full access to the Wrestling Observer newsletter and archives. So if you love what you hear, head to WrestlingObserver.com. 12,000 Audio shows at your fingertips.